Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Have the RFU inadvertently killed the community game of rugby? I'm talking about the tackle height laws that are changing that will come in from next season and all of the discussion around this. An awful lot of people not happy about what the RFU have brought in. So in this video, I'm going to get into that, just give some of my thoughts on this as a whole, on this topic and why overall it's not good for the game. If you are new here, do subscribe to the channel for more content, like the video and drop a comment down below. I've seen so much discussion about this issue. Let me know what you think in the comments. All right, let's get into it. So yesterday, the RFU announced that from the 1st of July later this year, so basically from next season, players at level three and below, so national one and lower, are going to have to tackle around the waist. And basically, it seems like what they're trying to do is turn rugby from a collision sport into an evasion sport. So people having to tackle around the waist. Now, the RFU say that this is backed up by the evidence that they've done, that reducing the tackle height reduces concussions. I think we need to see that research, first of all, because there's also been research done in the past, which is circulating online for the trial that they did with championship clubs where they reduced the tackle height and actually it didn't lead to a reduction in concussions. I think it possibly I'm right in saying it might have even led to an increase in, or in concussions or certainly the level of concussion stayed the same. So what evidence are they using and what does all the evidence and scientific evidence point to around this? Because I've found it difficult to kind of cut through the noise, if you like, and actually work out what the evidence says when I was trying to prep for this video. Um, so I think that's really, really important. What's that evidence that they are basing this upon? Um, and many people have pointed towards France. I believe in France, they brought in laws similar to this. They're not exactly the same, but in France, they had these less um, re reducing the height of the tackle. Uh, and people suggest there it's been very, very effective. So I'm kind of struggling to work out exactly what the scientific evidence says in terms of reducing tackle height and reducing concussions. On the one hand, it just doesn't really make sense. I think anyone that has, has played the game at any level and a lot of the evidence has pointed towards the fact that when people reduce their height in the tackle, of course, that completely reduces head on head contact. But head to knees, head to hips, that sort of thing, you're still getting a lot of instances where people are getting concussions from tackling in that way. So my immediate reaction to this, and I'm happy to be swayed and my opinion changed, but it seems like utter madness. To me, the RFU, I think, are terrified of concussions. They're terrified of lawsuits, which obviously is, is a big, big issue. They're terrified as well, I think, of the perception of the game and people not thinking that the game is safe and parents not bringing their children along to start playing the sport in the first place. And I just wonder, and this is where I am at the moment with this issue, is of course we should always be looking at the sport and working out how to make it safer, but not at the detriment of completely changing the fundamentals of what rugby is. And I wonder whether it's time that we rebrand rugby as a blood sport in a similar way to boxing or something like that. We know that boxing is dangerous but people can make their own decisions about whether they want to get into it. And I whether, wonder whether rugby is something. And of course, as I've just said, you always look at new things, you know, when they brought in the HIA and the stand down period and all that sort of stuff. I think our awareness around head injuries is getting better and better all the time. You continue to try and improve there, but you acknowledge the fact that rugby isn't without its risks. A bit like anything, you know, we see people get really serious injuries in a lot of other sports as well. Um, but you acknowledge that rugby has its risks and then people can make their own decisions about whether they want to play the game or not. To me, seems like a more sensible approach because I fear with this change, and I'm going to get into what the games could look like at level three and below, it's going to completely alter the way in which rugby is played, I think. So let's see what happens. But that certainly would be something I'd advocate for is just changing the way in which we view rugby acknowledge its dangers, but that doesn't mean people shouldn't play the game. It just means that they can make their own decisions, really. All right, first of all, I want to talk about the community game. I'm going to get on to kind of the higher end of the national leagues in a minute, because I think that's a slightly different conversation. But thinking about the community game, I worry that this will drive people away from rugby clubs. Um, I was speaking to good friends of mine last night, and there are people at their rugby club in their 30s, 40s, even into their 50s who literally can't tackle lower. 
They, can't, they cannot get themselves low enough to tackle in the way that the RFU probably want them to do, which means they wrap people up higher. It doesn't mean they're tackling high. It doesn't mean they're getting too much head on head, but they are wrapping people up high and that's how they tackle. And they were saying to me that those people will be driven away from the game by these, cha by these changes. Um, I've seen other people point out as well. I saw Tim Cocker from BT Sport and the Egg Chasers podcast as well, sort of tweeting about it, that for years, rugby has been a sport that has allowed mainly men, but also women as well, to kind of channel their aggression and the physicality and those things that we love about the sport. And that's a really important part of the game for people to have that avenue to play rugby to use it as that outlet and it is an aggressive game it is a physical game so again that shouldn't be something that we're looking to ultimately change and it drives that competitiveness as well that's part of it um it will, clubs as well play such a key part in their communities if you think about it and what rugby clubs mean more than just the 80 minutes or whatever it is that people play on the weekend and i think participation could be affected by this at, certainly at kind of a senior level, um, a senior amateur level, I think it definitely could be affected at this. I don't know about, you know, maybe parents might feel more comfortable about their kids playing it if these are laws, I don't know. But certainly at that senior amateur level, I think it could have a really quite a negative effect ultimately. And I also want to mention the officials. Look, let's be frank, the referees, <laughs> the referees at uh, the amateur level of the game, they're not the best. They're volunteers, or not volunteers, I think they do get paid, but they're not in it for, for a career. They're in it to, to do it and probably earn a little bit of extra cash and because they enjoy it and blah, blah, blah. But they're not the best officials in the world. It's an absolute minefield now of to officiate these new r rules. And the RFU have said they're going to come out and they're going to have processes and, and to help everything transition into these new laws. But I just think for, for the officials, for the referee, it's going to be very, very difficult in particular. In, in particular, certain areas of the sport. I mean, defending close to your line, defending a pick and go right by your line. Is that possible anymore? Are you allowed to do it anymore? Because this also includes, I believe, the height of the ball carrier as well. How do you defend a mall as well? because that always involves being a little bit more upright. And, you know, there's so many areas of the game which are, which will be affected by this and could be completely changed by this. I just wonder what the sport's going to look like once we've brought in these changes. We'll have to wait and see. I also mentioned the higher end of this spectrum, that kind of national one, national two, that level of the game. How difficult is it going to be for a side in national one with the aim to get promoted into the championship? They get promoted and then they're going to have to play under a completely different set of laws in the championship to what they did in national one. And likewise as well, you've got players who are dual registered at a premiership club and a championship club or a club in, in National One, where they might have to flip-flop between these two different rules as well. It just seems like it is a real minefield of how people are going to be able to get through this and 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 what it's going to look like for, for those players that are dual registered as well. Um, I guess, as, as I've said already, all sports have an element of, of injury risk as well. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what the long-term solution is for rugby. Of course, concussion is an issue, but I still come back to the point that I think the game is always going to have its risks. We should do everything we can to make it as safe as possible, but within the framework of what rugby is. And I think ruling out tackles... Um, I saw a clip on social media, actually, of a brilliant Josh Adams covering tackle in the Six Nations um, on an Italian winger, saving a try, pushing him into touch, and he kind of tackled him around this level, coming across sprinting. Would that now be illegal? Would that try-saving tackle be a penalty or a penalty try, a yellow card for Josh Adams? I know these rules aren't being brought in at that level of the game, but at that lower level, if that was to happen, what would be the consequences? So there's an awful lot of negativity around this. Interestingly, I've seen a lot of those championship players who were part of that trial that wasn't successful kicking back against it as well and saying it's ridiculous. Um, but let me know what you think in the comments down below on all of this. What do you think as well about the idea that we just need to reframe rugby as a sport, as a blood sport, as a sport that has its risks? It's not always going to be safe. We can't make it fully safe. And people can make their own decisions about whether they play the game. Because I'm sure any of you have watched this, and I haven't played rugby now for a long, long time, but growing up, playing it as a kid, it was absolutely brilliant. Of course, there are always risks. People got injured, but it was still well worth playing as a sport. And I think that would still be the same for the friends I have now who are playing senior rugby at an amateur level. So drop a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel as well. Like the video. And I'll see you in the next one.